This week in lab we will be making luminol. Luminol is a very versatile compound that exhibits chemiluminescence uh, with the appropriate oxidant. It will glow a bright blue color. It's often used at crime scenes to detect uh, the presence of blood. You've probably seen it on some of the CSI shows or, or any of the crime shows on television. And so we are going to be making luminol first, and then we will uh, mix it with an oxidant and watch it glow. Let's first look at how luminol is prepared in the lab. We are going to start with 3-nitrophthalic acid. And we're going to react that with hydrazine. And we'll do this with some heat. Now let's take a look at the mechanism as we go along here. The hydrazine is acting as a nucleophile. We know there's partial positive charge on these carbonyl carbons, partial negative out on the oxygen. So the lone pair on the nitrogen is attracted to that partial positive charge. We will get attack at the carbonyl and kick the electrons up onto the oxygen. Now we have two nitrogens, we also have two carbonyls. So the same thing happens with the other nitrogen. It attacks the other carbonyl. Now anytime we kick electrons up onto an oxygen of a carbonyl, we always need to look and see can those electrons kick back in and reform the carbonyl if we have a leaving group. And so we can kick off the OH. You can go ahead and move the proton over first. I'm gonna just kick the OH off and then get the proton. Either way is fine. We'll see that here in just a moment. So we get our carbonyl group back. We have an extra proton on the nitrogen, on both of those nitrogens. And we have just kicked off an OH group, off both of those carbonyls. Now, that's a strong base that's gonna pull off the proton nitrogen. Like I said, you could move the proton over first and then kick off the water molecule. Either way is fine. So now we're neutral. Now we're almost to the luminol. We need to reduce the nitro group to an amino group and then we'll have luminol. To accomplish that we use sodium hydrosulfite this is the formula for sodium hydrosulfite careful that's not sodium hydrogen sulfide, it's sodium hydrosulfide. 
This is a uh, reducing reagent, and it will reduce the nitro group to the mean. So this is a reduction. Reduces that nitro group. an NH2 group, an amino group. The mechanism is not understood for how that happens, so I'm not going to show you the mechanism for that step. And this is our luminol. Now, <clears throat> luminol itself is just a, a, a yellow color. It's not going to glow on its own. We need to oxi put in an oxidant to uh, get uh, to make the luminol glow. So let's look at the glowing process here. Now, I'm not going to hold you responsible for this glowing portion as far as exam purposes go. I do, I do expect you to know how the luminol is made, know the mechanism of getting there and, and all the steps there. So I expect you to know how we make luminol, but as far as this glowing uh, process goes, I will not test you on this. So let's look at making the luminol glow. So to make it glow, we are going to put in a hydroxide base, we'll use sodium hydroxide. We're going to add in hydrogen peroxide and we're going to put in a catalyst. Now our catalyst is potassium ferricyanide. We, iron is one of the things that will make, that will catalyze the oxidation process here and catalyze the reaction. Um, so when they spray aluminum all around at a crime scene, it's the iron that's in the blood, in the hemoglobin, that is catalyzing it. But we're going to use potassium ferricyanide instead of using blood. Uh, there are other things that will work as well, and that sometimes causes a problem at crime scenes. Uh, certain bleaches will catalyze it, so if the, uh, the killer had cleaned up the crime scene with certain bleaches, it'll make the whole floor glow wherever he put the, the bleach. Uh, copper and certain copper compounds will also catalyze it. Uh, so there's several things that will catalyze it besides iron. So that sometimes causes a problem. Uh, first, the uh, hydroxide base is what's happening here first. The, we're putting in two equivalents. The hydroxide base is going to pull off a proton off of the nitrogen, so we're doing two equivalents, so both of them will get pulled off. And we make a dianion. The hydrogen peroxide and the potassium ferricyanide, the potassium ferricyanide again acts as an oxidant. This will uh, break apart hydrogen peroxide and make oxygen. And it's the oxygen that is uh, reacting with our molecule that's going to be doing the oxidation. oxidizes our molecule with the loss of a nitrogen molecule. We can see we increase the oxygen content, so that is an oxidation. And we also get a nitrogen molecule that will, of course that's a gas and that bubbles out. Now when this forms, this forms in an excited state, a triplet excited state,
You know things don't like to be in that high energy excited state. So this is going to undergo what's called an inner system crossing to a triplet, I mean to a singlet excited state. So it's triplet right now. It's gonna to go to a singlet excited state. Triplet is where electrons are aligned. You know electrons like to be paired up. So their spin states are aligned and they like to be paired up. So we're gonna go from that alignment to where they're paired up and go to a singlet excited state. And a singlet's where they're paired up. <clears throat> and then it will go from the, that singlet excited state to the ground state. know this looks the same but it is going to a ground state a lower energy state now you went from high energy excited state to the ground state low energy ground state when many molecules do that when they go from high energy to a low energy oftentimes you're giving off that energy and most of the time it's given off as heat but there's a few compounds like luminol that gives it off as light. And so we get light here that is produced. It's giving off that energy uh, in the form of light. That's the chemiluminescence. <clears throat> now the light that it's giving off is, uh, happens to be 425 nanometers. And so that's gonna be a blue color that we will see when it glows. So that's our lab this week. Like I said, you are responsible for, uh, for the, what I presented there of making the luminol itself, but I will not test you over this glowing process. So that's our lab this week. It's a good, nice, fun lab. It is a lengthy lab, so if you have any questions as we go along, please ask. It is a very lengthy lab. It will take most of the lab period.